A night guard is a dental appliance designed to protect teeth from the effects of grinding and clenching during sleep. It helps reduce pressure on the jaw joints, preventing excessive wear on teeth and minimizing strain on the muscles and TMJ. However, the effectiveness of a night guard depends on its design. Poorly made ones can worsen symptoms by forcing the jaw into an incorrect position. Most dentists make night guards for their patients, but many patients complain about how the night guard makes them feel. And there's a reason for this. Most dentists will take an impression or a scan of a patient and send this to their lab to make a night guard. So here's what typically happens when a night guard is made. Most labs take the impression or scan they got from the dentist and open the bite using a hinge movement. Now hinging simply means rotation and the rotation occurs at the jaw joint or condyle level. Why is this a problem? Hang in there, I'm about to show you. When a lab makes a night guard, it's usually for the upper teeth, opening the bite on a hinge. Now think about this. Where do the lower teeth go when you hinge the mandible at the condyle level? They shift slightly backwards. This means that the mandible is retruded when the bite opens on a hinge. A retruded mandible may be okay for some patients, but many patients don't like how it feels and many complain of increased pain as a result of wearing their night guard. Here's why. There's a lot of tiny important anatomy to consider right behind the condyle. There are blood vessels and nerves and ligaments that all require adequate space in order to function properly. When you hinge the mandible open, the condyle actually compresses those tiny structures. And in someone who already has some TMJ issues, this will cause discomfort or pain or ear symptoms when wearing the night guard. So this is an example of a lab uh, opening up on a hinge. So let's say you've got this patient that you're going to do a night guard for right here. And then you're just simply going to open up in a hinge way by one and a half millimeters. So watch what happens to the teeth. So now the lower jaw is slightly further back than it used to be. So now you have your lower teeth sitting against the upper night guard. Unfortunately, because of the heavy contacts in the front, and a lot of these patients actually have even more acrylic in here, this person actually cannot go forward because they're banging into those front teeth. And this is the problem with this kind of design is that this patient doesn't have the freedom to move into this forward position. So they're actually locked into this position here. This is one of the biggest problems with these traditional night guards. Patients who have TMJ symptoms like jaw pain, clicking, headaches, ear ringing, or tinnitus, or ear fullness, don't do well with these types of night guards. Let's take a look at a real case where this went wrong so you can see why this is such a problem. This patient has mild wear, but started experiencing pain after getting a night guard. Even on her panorex, you can see clear condylar changes like lipping, sclerosis, even salahyoid calcifications. A healthy condyle is a well-spaced joint with room for the articulating disc. But in this patient, the condyle is completely misshapen, compressed against the glenoid fossa. Now let's see what happens when we hinge the jaw in this already compromised position. By hinging, we're pushing the condyle even further back, compressing sensitive tissues and worsening TMJ symptoms. This is why typical splints like deprogrammers, NTIs, and any appliance that forces retrusion should never be used in these patients. Take a look at another case. After a routine cleaning, her dentist makes, makes her a splint. It looked fine, but every time she wore it, her pain got worse. She told her dentist, but her dentist's response was just to keep wearing it. Then she locked. She literally couldn't open her mouth. And you can see the articulating paper marks where her teeth are desperately trying to slide, but the splint blocks her. And even tiny movements triggered muscle spasms. So what's the solution? In the next video, I'll show you how to design a night guard that actually works. One that allows movement and prevents compression. Stay tuned.